The reason reputation matters is that it sends a message. And when the Innocence Project takes a case, it sends a message. I would have never guessed that they would have any interest in Scott Peterson. Seemed like a slam dunk, okay? But now they're looking at this case from back in 2002. You, you'll remember it. I, mean, I don't know how old you are, but if you just Google it, 2002, Lacey, eight months pregnant, uh, you know, pretty wife, pretty guy, pretty life. Uh, but underneath that, an ugly reality. She winds up dead. The baby and she are found some months later. He's brought up on charges. There's all this drama. Could we have gotten it wrong? Could the jury have gotten it wrong? Let's bring in News Nation correspondent, one of the first reporters to cover the Scott Peterson case, Laura Engel. And we are also, we're double fortunate tonight. You got Engel, who was using my office today, so nothing better be missing. And we have News Nation legal analyst, Sarah Azari, whom you all know, who happens to be dug in on this case. And she is uh, not just a criminal attorney, as you know, she's the host of the Presumption podcast. All right, so this is, uh, this is fortuitous. Thank you to both. So, uh, Engel, just give us a little bit of background flavor about how deeply you analyze this case uh, from soup to nuts. You know, when this case first started, I, like many others, were completely, you know, infatuated with finding out what happened with Lacey Peterson, this beautiful pregnant woman missing from Modesto. I'm from Sacramento, California. I was working in Los Angeles at the time uh, for KFI Radio and immediately wanted to go up there, which I did, and stood outside and reported outside of the Petersons' home while the search was on for her. And then there was the search center that was brought about with the friends and the family, the frantic desperate search for Lacey Peterson was underway. So I was there mm. from the beginning and I ended up covering every day of that trial in Redwood City, eventually getting an apartment, moving to Redwood City for the duration of the trial and the sentencing phase so that I would never miss a day of it. So we could talk about um, all of the people that were there, the people that went and visited Scott Peterson when this was going on. And then last year, that clip you just showed, I went back to Covina Avenue in Modesto, where I went back and kind of took a reset of what it was like to be in the Modesto neighborhood where Lacey mm -hmm. Peterson went missing. And again, you know, we heard that her husband, Scott Peterson, said that she was about to go out and walk a dog, their dog, Mackenzie. And... We've got this other narrative going on that has been going on since that week of Christmas of 2002 that a burglary across the street that happened around the same time mm -hmm. that she was supposed to go out for that walk could have something to do with it. All right, so let's hold there. And then from this point on, let's do it this way. Let's just go point for point because Sarah has gone through all of the offerings and the pleadings uh, from uh, the Innocence Project. And she says it's much more comprehensive than she expected, frankly. So let's go point for point. Um, the, uh, Sarah, so what do you believe the big headline is about why the Innocence Project is on this case? I mean, Chris, I think that typically in a habeas action or the motions related to habeas, we see one or two bases uh, for the wrongful conviction. Here, I was, I was floored. Uh, there's everything in here. There is the fact that there were other suspects and related incidents that were not investigated that relate to that burglary and potentially those suspects were the killers. Um, we've got exculpatory Brady evidence and that duty extends beyond the conviction. Things that were not turned over and I'm old enough, unfortunately, <laughs> to remember this trial and Laura probably remembers too. It was a daily event during this trial that the defense kept objecting. Hey, hey witnesses testifying, well, where's that report? Didn't turn it over. It was a daily event, and so though th that was exculpatory uh, evidence. You know, we've got um, tips and leads that were not followed, and that the prosecutor was having a romantic relationship with a law enforcement on the same case. I mean, that's not a light matter. There was a recent case in Kentucky, a murder case, that was thrown out because of that issue. So everything right. is, and I, and I am, I am just floored. Hey, thank you for watching. Please go to newsnationnow.com newsnationnow.com and you can find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button down below. Then you will get more of News Nation's fact-driven coverage.